Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 2 to the power x squared minus 6x plus 7 equals 3 over 4. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, we could solve this problem in more than one way. I'm thinking about two different methods here. Even though they are pretty similar, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to do what is, you know, pretty much the obvious method, logging both sides. Which base do you use? Doesn't matter, no big deal. You can go ahead and use natural log, you can use base 10, just LOG, or uh, you can use base 2, either one. But let's go ahead and use natural log for our first method. So I'm going to go ahead and ln both sides, ln 2 to the power x squared minus 6x plus 7 equals ln 3 over 4. Now, on the left-hand side, we apply the power rule. And remember, when you have log of a to the power b, you can write this as b times log a. That's the power rule. And on the right-hand side, we're going to be using the quotient rule, which is if you have log a over b, then you can write it as log a minus log b. So the log of a quotient is basically the difference of two logs. Make sense? And here I didn't specify the base, but when it's not written, it's usually base 10. But if you write any base, it'll do, including the natural log. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this to the front. That's the power x squared minus 6x plus 7 multiplied by ln 2 equals, on the right hand side, we can write this as ln3 minus ln4. You don't have to, you can leave it like that too, that's fine. But the next thing we're going to do is basically, we're going to solve this equation as a quadratic. How do you solve this equation as a quadratic? First of all, you kind of need to distribute and then turn it into a full quadratic. So we're going to get something like ln2 as the coefficient of x squared, and then minus 6 ln2 as the coefficient of x, there's no other x term, and then we're going to have plus 7 ln2, and then the other terms we're just going to bring to the left by subtraction, minus ln3 plus ln4, and the whole thing is equal to 0. So far so good. Now, how do we solve the quadratic? We basically need to use the quadratic formula because even if this is factorable, it's not easy to factor. And when we find the solutions, you're going to see how it can be factored, but, uh, you know, it's hard to do directly. But there's something we can do before we write the quadratic formula. And that is simplifying the constant term. Because ln4 is ln2 squared, and this can be written as 2 ln2. We have 7 ln2 plus 2 ln2, which gives us 9 ln2. So let's go ahead and incorporate that ln2 x squared minus 6 ln2 x and then plus 9 ln2 by combining those two terms minus ln3 equals 0. Great. Now let's go ahead and solve this and if you didn't really see, you didn't get why this would be quadratic, go ahead and take a look at this. If I kind of change the colors a little bit here, you notice that this looks like ax squared plus bx plus c, doesn't it? It is quadratic in x because everything else is a constant. Now, using the quadratic formula, we're going to get negative b, which is 6 ln 2, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. But instead of doing this, let's go ahead and find the discriminant first and simplify as much as possible because we're going to keep writing it over and over, right? So this will save us some time. What is the discriminant, the delta in a quadratic equation? b squared minus 4ac, right? So b squared, again, we, we can ignore the negative sign when we square it, minus 4ac, a is ln2, and c is 9 ln2 minus ln3. Awesome. Let's go ahead and square this and kind of uh, simplify as much as possible. We have 6 ln2 squared. We can leave it like that. And then when we distribute, this is going to give us 36 ln2 squared, right? Notice that negative 4 times 9 is negative 36, and ln2 times ln2 is ln2 squared. And then plus 4 times ln2 times ln3. The double negative will turn it into a plus sign. But notice that 6 squared is the same as 36, so these two terms are going to cancel out. 
leaving us with a nicer delta, which is 4 ln 2 times ln 3. Okay, great. And then uh, what can we do after this? We can go ahead and plug it into our equation. Let's go ahead and write the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is the square root of delta, divided by 2a, right? What is b? What is a? a is the coefficient of x squared. b is the coefficient of x. So negative b is going to be 6 ln 2 plus minus the square root of 4 ln 2 times ln 3. I just ignore the parentheses there. Hopefully that is understood. Divide by 2a, which is 2 times ln 2. So you could probably leave it like that. I don't, I don't think this can be simplified more. Maybe you can take out a 2 and divide everything by 2 and maybe write it in a simpler form like this. 3 ln 2 plus minus, by the way, this 2 is going to cancel out and we're going to end up with the square root of ln 2 times ln 3 inside the radical and then that is divided by just 1 ln 2 because everything was divided by 2. Make sense? Okay, so it looks like those are the solutions. And I don't think we can simplify them even more than this because ln2 times ln3, as far as I know, is not a perfect square. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Second method actually kind of combines these things beforehand so we can arrive at the solution a little faster. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to cross multiply because 4 is a power of 2. So that would make sense. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 4. And now this can be written as 2 squared. And then we can go ahead and add the exponents. And that will give us 2 to the power x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 3. Awesome. This is where the stuff gets interesting. Because if you look at the exponent very carefully, you're going to realize it is a perfect square, isn't it? This is x minus 3 quantity squared. You should be very familiar with these kinds of expressions. Start you know, practicing them if you're not familiar, because when you see, you should be able to recognize really quickly. Now, we can kind of write this as 2 to the power x minus 3 squared equals 3. Awesome. At this point, uh, again, there's a couple of things that you can do, which is going to give you different looking solutions, but they all mean the same thing. Let's use base 2 this time, so we can make it a little different from the first method. If you log both sides with base 2, you're going to get the answer like this. When you move this to the front, you know, log 2 base 2 is going to be 1. So this ends up being x minus 3 squared equals log 3 with base 2. Okay? Now, this is a little easier than the first method because we have a perfect square and we can just square root both sides. And that's going to give us a plus minus sign. And then you can kind of add 3 to both sides and that will give you both solutions. Now, how is this different from the first method? If you take a look at it, you can kind of work with change of base and hopefully turn this into the uh, first method, uh, the stuff that we found with the first method. And that would be really good practice. Definitely, you can try it. And here's how the change of base works. Log bit base 2 of 3 can be written as ln3 over ln2. If you want to use natural log. If you want to use log, then you can write it as log3 over log2. Or if you wanted to attach any base here, you could, as long as they are the same. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.